Welcome to this video, my name is Christian from Beyond Premiere, and this video is going to contain huge, huge spoilers for episode 10. So please, if you don't want to know nothing at all for the episode, you can skip this video. But if you want to know what's going to happen in episode 10, here's the promo. Okay, so I have done a lot of videos on the series, as you can see in my channel, but this is a huge one. Episode 10 is going to be the finale of the season and looks like it's going to be huge. Let's go ahead and discuss the episode description for this episode. The episode title is the following, A Dream of a Dream. In the wake of a tragic death, Blackthorn finally considers the true nature of Turnaga's plan. Okay, so the title of this episode, A Dream of a Dream, sounds kind of sad. Oh, that doesn't sound right. That sounds sad. It makes us think that maybe someone's hope and dreams have not worked out the way they wanted or intended. And from the description, we can learn that Blackthorn starts to question Turnaga's plan after something really bad happens, a tragic death. Someone who makes Blackthorn realize that Turnaga's quest for power comes at a high price. That being Marigo. The episode is a big deal because it's gonna lead us to the huge battle that everyone's been waiting for. Sekigahara. This is where Ishido and Turnaga's forces finally clash to decide the fate of Japan. Now, if you have read the book or seen the older TV series, you probably know that the tragic death mentioned in the description is gonna be most likely referring to Mariko. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Her death is a major turning point in the story and it deeply affects Blackthorn and his understanding of Toronaga. But what Blackthorn doesn't know is that Mariko has been trying to die for a while now. We have seen her as she express her concerns about her life and about ending it all. It's also important to remember that her fate has been foreshadowed throughout the series, which hints about her family's past and her own internal pain. Episode 9 is where her story reached an end and her dad could have major consequences to the outcome of the battle and the future of Japan. Moving into this episode, episode 10, and let's discuss the huge battle, and that is Sekigahara. This showdown went down on October 21st, 1600, and it was not just some random showdown. This was the grand finale of centuries of political drama. On one side, we had the Eastern Army led by the big boss, Tokugawa, taking him as the master strategist always one step ahead. Facing him was the Western army under Ishida, a guy with a sword to settle. Now what I love about this is that you can see in the image we have Tokugawa on the left and on the right, Ishida. In this case, Turanaga on the left and Ishido on the right. Now Sekigahara was not just about who had the bigger swords or the flashier armor. This battle was a game of chess with alliances shifting and betrayals happening faster and you can say Katana. Tokugawa, who something that was incredible, convincing some of the Western Army folks to switch sides. And bam, the Eastern Army emerged victorious. And I would love to see that in the series. This victory was a game changer. Tokugawa became the winner, snagged the title of Shogun, and set up shop in Edo, which basically is Tokyo today. And guess what? This ushered the Edo period, a time of peace, stability, and a whole lot of cool cultural stuff happening, which is hinted a lot in the previous episodes. <laughs> Japan basically shut its doors to the outside world and flourished like a bonsai tree. Before the epic clash at Sekigahara, we get a glimpse into Turanaga's mindset in the morning as he prepares for battle. We see him in the midst of the mountains surrounding him, and I imagine that this is before he goes into that war. But something that he's gonna have, and that is his armor. In the YouTube videos, which is like the podcast exp exploring the behind the scenes and creation of the series, they explain about his armor. His outfit is not just some random collection of armor and fabric. This is a carefully crafted masterpiece, a symbol of power and authority. He wears a magnificent jimbori, a sleeveless garment worn over armor, which has feathers that cascade down his back. As Carlos Rosario, the custom designer explained that these feathers are carefully selected and arranged 
transitioning from brown at the top to larger, more impressive feathers at the bottom. This subtle detail speaks to Toranaga's nature and his understanding of the power of symbolism. We can see that it's a work of art, made from rich fabrics and has a lot of intricate details. The colors and the patterns are bold, reflecting Toranaga's confidence and status. The production designer mentioned that every element of the costume was researched and crafted to ensure historical accuracy and visual impact. Underneath this, Toranaga wears crafted armor designed to protect him in battle while also conveying his power. Ishida, on the other hand, is all dark colors, gray, black, and brown. His armor appears more functional and less than Toranaga's. The emphasis seems to be on the practicality and protection, with less focus on the embellishment or symbolism. This could reflect Ishido's nature and his background as a warrior who rose through the ranks. I love the contrast between the Toranaga's lighter colors and Ishido's darker tones, which symbolize their contrasting personalities and leadership styles. Turnag's attire, as we can see, suggests a more nuanced and a strategic approach, while Ishido's armor reflects a more direct and forceful style. We also see that it's going to be unfolding on the break of dawn in the morning, which adds more symbolism and anticipation to the upcoming conflict. The morning light often associated with the new beginnings and hope, as we can see, will illuminate a scene of violence and bloodshed as two powerful armies are going to clash. Together. To the right of Toranaga, my left, the possibility of Buntaro's dead in the upcoming battle is there. Considering his past suffering throughout the series, we have witnessed his internal struggles, his relationship with Mariko, and his loyalty to Toranaga. If Buntaro falls as Sigikahara, it could be seen as a both a tragic loss and a form of liberation. He will finally be able to escape and be with Mariko. He said in the previous episode, episode 8, <laughs> that they, he wanted to die with her. So, hey, this could serve as a powerful reminder of the sacrifices made by those who serve a greater ca cause and the heavy burden of loyalty in a world that we can see is filled with conflict. Now, the question that you may all have is where is Blackthorn? In both the book and the original TV series, Blackthorn's role at the Battle of Sekikahara takes an unexpected turn. Instead of being directly involved in the combat, he finds himself on the sidelines, observing the events unfold. This shift in his participation serves several purposes. By placing Blackthorn as an observer, the, the story allows us to experience the battle through the eyes of an outsider. His reaction and observations could highlight the cultural differences and the brutality of the samurai warfare. Blackthorn non-participation could also be seen as a test of his loyalty to Toronaga. Will he remain a passive observer or will he find a way to intervene and potentially impact the battle? Now, the title of the next episode is A Dream of a Dream, which sounds a bit mysterious, but it also makes us think that maybe someone's been dreaming big, but things have not quite worked out the way they hope, this being Blackthorn. From what we have seen in the trailers and teasers, Blackthorn seems pretty upset. He may start to realize that Turnaga's plan might not be all sunshine and rainbows. There's a dark side to it. And Blackthorn not sure he likes what he's seeing. Maybe he's starting to understand that Turnaga is willing to do whatever it takes to win, even if it means sacrificing people he cares about. It's like that saying, the ends justify the means. Blackthorn might not agree with that way of thinking, and it could also cause some serious problems between him and Taranaga. Thinking about Blackthorn and everything he's gone through this season, it's easy to imagine him feeling confused and frustrated. He's probably asking himself, why all this war? Why does Sekikahara have to happen? Remember, Blackthorn comes from a different world, a world where things are done differently, and he may not understand the samurai way of thinking, where honor and loyalty are everything, even if it means sacrificing your life or the lives of others. I imagine that Blackthorn is like, hey, and struggling to understand why Toronaga and Ishido cannot just talk things out, find a peaceful solution. Whatever happens, it's going to be intriguing to see. But that's the preview for episode 10. This is my last preview episode before the finale. I really am super grateful for all your support and subscribing to the channel. 
I really appreciate all the support and comments that you have been giving the channel. Thank you so much. I'm really grateful. But my name is Christian from Bien Premier, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye, one.